Hello, hello there, and we are live. See ya, ladies and gentlemen, to the other people who are going to, you know, tune in and get to listen to us later on, because I know many of my people, uh, mostly in the UK, haven't come back from work, but still, you know, hopefully you guys join us soon later on or watch this on playback. See ya, guys, you are welcome to another new episode, yeah, of Gooners and Mags, one of my favorite shows on this channel yeah but still on still you know i don't have much time uh steve doesn't have much time to actually you know uh, uh do shows weekly but you know once in a while you know i would definitely bring Strasbourg steve down here yeah you guys know he's my he's my you know he's my right hand guy and call him right. any, at any time to you know come down here and do justice to the show so yeah steve you're welcome to the show episode seven season two man We've done season one. This is season two, episode seven. You're welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, bro. I'm doing good. What about you? What about you? I'm doing good, man. Right. And you know what? Yeah, I can't just wait for the premiership to be back because that's mm. the main thing we're looking at, yeah? The premiership to be back. And it's back on the weekend. And, uh, oh, Drew Gunners is down here, man. Good, this is the thing with Ellie, Ellie shows. I like Ellie shows, but lots of people wouldn't be here normally uh, uh, by seven. It's it's when, you know, most of the people that come to my channel, uh, uh, you know, they've come back from work at that time. But still on still, yeah. I still got my guy, Drew Gunners, and he says, good afternoon, Tony and Steve. Drew, how you doing, man? Yeah, man. Shout out to Steve. Have, have oh. you have you subscribed to Drew Gunners? Yes. Yes, I okay. actually am. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be to be nice if you subscribe to him, but do check later on. Uh, uh, big up to you, Drew Gunners, man. How are you doing? Uh, see, yeah, uh, Steve. First of all, before we get into the crunch matches coming up, yeah, this weekend, the internationals. I know you live, you seriously live for this moment, yeah. The international games. I saw you waxing lyrical, yeah, about the Mexico US stuff going on. You're going to give yeah. us a background, you know, stuff about that one. I don't know if we're driving from Mexico, but all I saw on Twitter was you driving in a car and just just writing something random about Mexico. I want to know all about that. Throw that away. I need to understand which teams in this international really stood out for you. Um, most teams have completed, uh, you know, their entry. Uh, into the Hero 2024 competition, the groups are out. Uh, definitely, would we'll look into these groups and uh, find out if these groups are really the groups of death. But first of all, just before we start that, uh, uh, just talk to us about these internationals and uh, uh, you know the kind of games that stood out for you, man. Um. Well, obviously, the biggest one for me personally was USA Mexico Concacaf <laughs> Nations final. Um, mm. We had. Um, we didn't even play that well. So we had two games. Mm. We had the semifinal against Jamaica, which we played really, really poorly. But mm -hmm. Corey Burke scored an own goal uh, in the dying moments of the of the second half. And we, you know, then Haji Wright of Coventry City um, scored two goals in extra time. Uh, and we got mm. to the final against Mexico. Mexico played Panama, actually played pretty well. You know, beat them three nothing pretty easily. Well, uh, um, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to cut you off there. Yeah. How, how can yeah. you say? How can you say that? Uh, you know, you didn't play quite well in that Jamaican matchup, but after extra time, you were leading by three goals to one. Even in the matchup you you played against Mexico, it was two nil. Come on, man. Give them no, some we, props we, to Jamaica. We, we play. We played well enough to win. We took mm. our chances and we scored. We scored a very beautiful goal cur courtesy of Tyler Adams and another very good strike from Gio Reyna, who's a, mm. who's a phenomenal player. I mean, Gio Reyna just needs to, you know, something something needs to happen where he go. He needs to go to a club where he's actually wanted and appreciated. Mm. Like that, 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 that for me, if Arsenal would get him, that would be a good move because then you could rest Odegaard and also Reyna can play the eight as well. So mm. that would be a player like if you guys got a Gio Reyna, that would be a good move for for the player and the club. I think if if you know if your manager wanted. But, it. Uh, uh, 
again, I don't know if it's suitability to the Premiership, man. It, you know, it, it's one thing. He hasn't to, played to... though, Tony. We don't know. We don't know if he is or isn't. So, like we say, because we say this about players, right? That come from outside the Prem. We don't know if they're suitable yeah. or not. Well, yeah. that are, he's at a club right now, and the manager isn't giving him a chance to play. So we can't really yeah. jump to any conclusions if he is or isn't, right? <laughs> yeah. I get that. The thing is, he's getting he's getting like 10 minutes game time when Morgan Gibbs White mm. is playing okay to mediocre. Bro, have you seen Morgan Gibbs White on corner kicks? They're dreadful. They mm. are dreadful. Like mm. Nottingham Forest fans complain continually about those. So mm. he's not playing at his very best. And Nuno Nuno Spirits is not giving Reyna uh game time to really prove anything. So Anything. And look, yeah. you guys have signed play Arsenal signed players from outside of the Prem regularly, and you've had lots of success. Odegaard didn't come from the the uh, Premier League; came from La Liga. Was playing out uh, yeah. so that Saliba, Gabriel, both from France. So you know, you you know what I think about that whole myth. To be honest, no, 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 no. see, man, I, I I definitely get you, yeah. But one of the players that I was actually thinking that you would actually, you know, uh, gloat about was this guy called Haji Wright, yeah, yes. twenty six yes. year old, yes. plays his football for yes. Coventry. He's actually played thirty five games for Coventry this season. He scored thirteen yes. goals, a whooping thirteen yes. goals this season with six assists down there. Haji Wright, United yes. States, twenty six year old, is young and is prime. Uh, you know, yes. he's getting goals. He's a great, great player. I know you will talk about him. Yes. He also played for Atayan Spor uh, from Turkey. I think yes. the last time he played. For of them he played about 28 games scored about if i'm correct about 15 goals in the season had you right played for atayal Spor in turkey now coming down to uh, uh coventry is played 35 games and yeah. scored 13 with six assists what do you think about this right guy what's up with this guy he, I, I know you're the google of football tell us about him now Haji right is he's he's <laughs> Big, big, strong, powerful. He's a tar he, 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 you know, he could play him as a target man, but he's got good strength mm -hmm. when he tries to run in behind. He's got some some strength. He's got a decent first touch, and he's got a he's got a tendency to show up in some clutch games. You know, for Coventry City against mm -hmm. Wolves uh, in the FA Cup quarterfinal, scored the last minute winner to you know get mm -hmm. Coventry City in their first FA Cup semifinal since 1986-87, and they won it that Oof. year. So, you know, and then he scored in the semifinal against Jamaica. So he's got he's he's yeah. got a lot of confidence right now. He's playing very yeah. well. Um, I like the player yeah. a lot. Um, and it wouldn't be, you know, if they got promoted, that would be their striker there. Now, in terms of the U.S., where he falls in the pecking order, you have Balligan, yeah. you have Brandon Vasquez, you have mm -hmm. uh, Ricardo Pepe, Jesus Ferreira, you know, the list goes mm -hmm. on. No, the thing is with the U.S. right now, we haven't really established a number nine that like starts with the national team time and time out. So For the national team, yeah, but it yeah. doesn't really seem exactly. to matter. It doesn't really seem to matter when it comes to Concacaf because you know one minute Ricardo Pepe's coming off the bench and contributing, then another <laughs> it's Haji Wright, then it's Jesus mm. Ferreira was on a good run. So it just mm. seems like it's a plug and play kind of thing with our with the kind of thing team. going on yeah yeah but yeah, it, would exactly. be nice, it would be nice to have a you know a a dedicated number one just so that the chemistry and the players can really get used to playing and get used um, to it but, that but hey but hey come on steve yeah it's two it's and two you know, the States of america one yeah it's, it's, two two. it's good to be yeah. in that space yeah it's good to be yeah. in that space with it's yeah. good to be in that space two and two in the internationals you know so that's a good uh, uh, uh you know international break for the united states of yep. america the next one yep. we'll be going down to is c germany we can't talk about those internationals without talking about germany coincidentally yep. uh, guys who listen uh, to us in the chart coincidentally uh, uh um our brother down here yeah uh uh you know it has roots from germany i don't know if you start telling them about your roots from germany my brother man but germany actually had 
quite good, quite a great time out there in the internationals. Uh, most of all, a very positive one for Arsenal also, mostly with the development of Kai Havertz, his metamorphosis, his renaissance, his new lease of life, Nagelsmann giving him, you know, yeah. that long rope, playing that left-back position at the start of uh, Nagelsmann reign and coming back down now to start and actually play as a number nine in that attacking mm -hmm. position for the German national team. See, that growth is astronomical. If Nagelsmann, yeah, who is another coach, who isn't in the, even in the premiership yet, yeah, is recognising that Kai Havertz can start up with that team day in, day out, game in, game out, you know, then why are Arsenal fans whining, uh, you know, about Kai Havertz? He's scoring goals in the internationals. Mm. He's scoring goals for the Arsenal. He is a threat. He's an aerial threat. Uh, he, he has sort of like rediscovered his touch again. He's now an assistant in a yeah. couple of games. And, and you could see that, you know, he's helped Germany. What do you think about Kai Havertz in this German national team? And, um, you know, what do you think about this? German national team in terms of individual players. Uh, there's one guy called Mitchell Stat or whatever is his name. Full Krog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start. I, I don't know, you know, yeah. And one of the guys, Full Krog, is also looking very, very good. Uh, just give us a tentative yeah. statement about you know, about Germany. Shout out to True Goddard who's come down to the show. This is a one hour, fifteen minutes, or one hour, twenty minutes. Header between me and my brother here, uh, uh, you know, Steve Mahalo. So stay tuned and keep watching. Big up to True Gunner. Subscribe to his channel. Real one out there, man. I have a new brand new show with True Gunner. I had that this Monday. Go check it out. Yeah, guys. And subscribe to his channel. Football mm. band. Subscribe to his channel. My right hand guy. I'll be having a show with him on Friday. Early on Friday when I come back from work. I'll be having a show with him. Uh, big up to Football Brand. And of course, Jordan Heyman, big up to you, man. How are you doing, brother? Talk to us, Steve Mahalo, man. Talk to these people. Germany. Yeah, well, obviously, the, the my biggest takeaway is from, from watching Deutschland is the fact, I mean, Tony mm. Chris coming out of uh, international retirement and, look, slotted straight mm -hmm. into the team for both games, probably, you know, Germany's best player. You know, definitely mm -hmm. up there. Florian Vett, very good against France. Um, as well. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. Maximilian Middlestadt having a stellar season for Valk Stuttgart, <laughs> uh, their third place right now. They could finish mm -hmm. above Bayern. It's only a five point gap last time I checked. It's possible, so, man. It's yeah, possible. So that would be the first time Stuttgart had played Champions League football since 2000, uh, 2007, 2008. Um, mm. So, no, nah, they've, they've been moving great. They've got Girassi, they've got Fulrich, who was another positive addition. To um, mm. Germany's team as well, got a got a got a call up and deserved it. Valdemar Andon mm. as well at center back. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, the team. The t I, I still don't trust Germany because they've done a lot to hurt me. They've done a lot to hurt me, Tony. So yeah. two good friendly performances against, a, you know, the best team in the world, France, and a decent Dutch team, not at their best. I don't rate Koeman, so mm. I, I I I you know I figured. You know, we would win that game, but yeah, I'm pretty, yeah. Um, I'm pretty satisfied. I would say definitely with the with the international break. Look, Nagelsmann's a a, a very good coach. Um, it seems like the addition of Tony Kroos, Andre. Is, is he a world class coach though? Is Nagelsmann a I don't world class really... coach? Because these days we throw good. about this world class managers, world class footballers. Yeah, even yeah. we'll talk about something because. This Manchester United fans, yeah, they're making me go crazy, yeah. I will soon shut down my Twitter, yeah. All of them are all saying that this Mano guy, yeah, is the new renaissance. Uh, he's generational, yeah. One said he's world class. But Bukayo Saka is out there who has been carrying this team time and time without number. He's in world class, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, I will soon shut down my Twitter because the eyesore that I'm seeing down there, yeah, the words coming out from people's mouths, yeah, the hype of this main guy. I, see, man, I'm not having it. We'll talk about that later on. But yeah, continue about this Germany stuff, man. No, oh, yeah, and and for me, it's always been with Germany. We have mm. some talent. I think a lot of Germany's primary talent is midfield. I I could go on and on. Gundogan, Witz can play there, attacking midfield. Musiala, 
Um, Andrik is having a good season for Leverkusen. Gundogan, mm-hmm. Kru, mm-hmm. I could go on and on and on. Thomas Muller. Ritz, Andrik, uh, uh, yeah. Musiala, like, Kimmich. So, so, I'm not so sure so, about Kimmich this season, but no, Kimmich, uh, Kimmich is well, out Kimmich, there anyway. Kimmich, Kim, Tony, Kimmich is playing right back now for club and country. That's something I will give some credit to Tuchel for. In the past month or so, mm. I'd say, he's been playing Kimmich as a right back, and he's he's, he's, he's looked back to his very best, you know, both, mm. like I said, for club and country. So, look, as long as Kimmich keeps playing well there, then that gives us, you know, it, it solves a problem at right back for, for club and country. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for me, it's... it's um. It's the biggest thing is can you get Florian Vitz and Musiala and Tony Kroos and mm. Gundogan? You get them all on the pitch at the same time, and can you get them as mm. a cohesive unit where it's not too attacking, where there's no midfield? Because we've seen that that mm. will definitely burn. You know, it. it you know, in, in uh, what's it called? And it's just too easy to get countered on if you have too many attacking players in midfield going forward. Then it leaves, and then yeah. the so fullbacks bomb up as well. So you've got to really be um, a good coach, and you have to have the right personnel to make it all work. So look, what I mean, is it, it's Steve, Steve, you've danced your way around that question. Is Nagelsmann a world class oh, right, manager? Sorry, yeah. Yes or no? No, no. Is, but he's he very a good. Manager? Just because, no, I would. I don't think, and I don't use world class to describe managers. I just think it sounds weird. Personally, um, but like, come on, come on, man. Just you're saying Mario is a world class manager, and Carlo Ancelotti, a world class manager, well, Arsene Wenger, a world class manager. These are world class managers, Diego Simeone, world class manager. It's not, I'm literally saying, I'm Tony, I'm saying mnemonically, or like the way you say world class manager, it just sounds weird. If it's a world class (laughs) player, it sounds, I don't know, something in my brain, it's like. Oh, <laughs> like imagine if you were at work and you're like, "Hey, manager, you're world class, bro." At Arby's or Walmart, like, yeah, my manager's world class. Like, this sounds weird. You know what I'm saying? So, look, he's very good. He's very good. You know what I'm saying? Or Tony, oh imagine days. you're at. Is at, that at, like three shows with Steve Mahalo, man? Oh, imagine yeah, you're at school. Oh my God, my manager's world class, guys. He gave me my vacation time and he gave me an extra week <laughs> off. Like he's world class. Like, but see, Steve, yeah, sounds, Arsenal fans. Yeah, goes, if Mikel Arteta yeah. doesn't give us a trophy this season, we're all talking about a world class manager. Even you have said Mikel Arteta isn't the world class manager. Why is it that when I'm asking about Nagel's man, yeah, when it's away from Arsenal, you're having a problem? talking and debating about a world-class manager. But if it's problem. about Arsenal, you're ready to say Mikel Arteta isn't a world-class manager. No, but I don't... Tony, I that? said world-class manager to me sounds weird. What I will say no, about... Why is it weird? Is, but Mikel what I will, Arteta what isn't I will weird about, to you. Many times you've talked about him not being a world-class manager, and I don't no, see you... I, see, no, I don't see you itch no, 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 whenever no, no, you're no, saying no, that. No, you say it straight no, forward. No, 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 no. You know my stance on Arteta. I think he's a good coach, and I think he is progressing well. Whether that progression continues at Arsenal and that leads to Champions League titles, more FA Cups, mm. League Cups, and, and Premier League, that is to be seen. I don't think he is that mm. guy yet. Do I think he should go to a Real Betis or a Real Sociedad or a Athletic Club, Bilbao, somewhere like that? Yes, because I think he could tactically if learn it, if, things. If he wins because... the title, see, if he wins, if he wins the title, title then I'm wrong. If he wins, if he wins the, the title, title then does it change wins... the whole outlook about how people view him, about the criticism coming his way? Does that change it automatically? Of course, because mm. when you, Tony, when I'm present, this is just me, when I'm presented mm. with new information and new facts and new mm. data and stuff like that, if I'm presented with something yeah. new, that's tangible and concrete. Yeah, I'll change mm. my opinion. I don't mind if I say, I think I got this one wrong. So, mm. yes, of mm. course. If you went to the Champions League and Premier League, yeah, my estimations of Arteta go way up because go I don't think, up. because I don't think you guys are quite yet ready to win a Premier League or Champions League. Therefore, if you go on to win one of those competitions, I would have to say, 
obviously huge credit to your players and manager who I didn't think were at that level yet, but performed to such a high level and proved me wrong. That's how I am. Okay, okay, good. I, I, I get you to talk about that. If Mikel Arteta wins the premiership, will you say he is a world-class manager? For you, for you, Tony, sure. Why not? Why not? No, no. Why, why for me? I'm talking about you. <laughs> will you call him a world-class yes, manager? Yes, I would regard him very highly. he wins the premiership highly. with Arsenal, I would do, think he do you is think a... a Real Madrid could come calling and say, hey, be our manager, not you're a world-class no. manager? Not for Ancelotti, no. Uh, now, now. If Ancelotti decided tomorrow I'm going to retire and Real Madrid were looking for managers, I would not be surprised if they looked at Arteta possibly. Yeah, because Barcelona, even without him winning Barcelona a major trophy looking, for the Arsenal, yeah. they, they won him. They won him. Even PSG, before they even knocked on the door of huh? Enrique, they, they actually knocked on the door of, of this Yeah, they inquired about that. it. That's what I heard. That's and and I heard. that's without a major trophy. Come on, man. So if he if he goes ahead, yeah, and wins this trophy for the Arsenal, see, uh, Steve, you would have to change your nomenclature uh, of yes, this of manager course. to a world of course. class of course. manager, definitely. Of course, All right, because good. Tony, I'm fair. I'm fair. When I know you're fair. <laughs> when someone overperforms or when someone does something crazy that I didn't think mm -hmm. was possible at that yes of course mm. i would give credit to them because i guess i'm fair like that mm. i don't have a problem with admitting sometimes i get things right sometimes i get yeah. things wrong that's and i, I and i'm comfortable that, with that you know what i'm saying i get so. that man. Uh, big up to everyone who's in the chat Jordan Heyman, um, of course, Drew Gunners, my guy, my graphics guy, Drew Gunners. I never knew that Drew Gunners was born in, in Munich. Big ups to you, man. I never knew. I did a couple of stuff in Germany too, but I spent uh, uh, most times in uh, Weimar. Uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's in an obscure part in Germany, uh, Weimar, and, and it's also, there's also a neighborhood. Where is it near? Where, where, what's the closest? Jena. Close? It's, it's near to Jena, near to Jena, near to Efrot. These three are together: Efrot, Jena, and um, where is Weimar. it? In the north, south, east, west? Where is it? I, I think it's in the north. So but, near Hamburg and Bremen. North. Hamburg, Bremen. No, no, mm, no. Nah, 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 those are further away. No, uh, no those are further okay. away. Okay. Yeah, this it's quite far. It's into into Germany itself, you know. But anyway, yeah. that's it. I used to date someone who was from Weimar there yeah nah. so i used to take trips down to weimar lots of times uh, whenever we're traveling to her her town in 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 uh, uh weimar but anyway that's it uh, but big ups to you drew gunners i never knew we we're born there uh, see yeah uh, um just before we go into this uh hero groups yeah uh, this german defender called tar what do you think about that guy i think he's solid i think he was a bit inconsistent a bit up and down um before Xabi mm. Alonso came in but now we're seeing it we're seeing him at his very best um for for Leverkusen obviously and and for Germany him next to Antonio Rudiger who again is a bit inconsistent when it comes to his country when when it comes to playing mm. for Deutschland he's a bit inconsistent Rudiger but it seems like those two guys have a good partnership now and again Kimmich coming at right back in Middlestadt doing a great job at left back. That's kind of solidified the whole defense in some aspects. It's improvement. It's major, major improvement. Yeah. Um, like I said, against, you know, the best team in the world, France. And um, yeah, definitely. And, uh, obviously the Dutch. But yeah, Jonathan Ta, look, he's he's been extremely consistent under Xabi Alonso at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, he's tall. He's very good in the air. Um, and he's a good he's a good leadership figure. Um, you know, mm. players really like he he's a very, very big part of um what's it called? He's a very big part of both squads for Germany and Leverkusen. Of both squads, I think, definitely. I think, I think yeah, definitely. I think I think he's he's found a good level of consistency. He's found a good level of mm. consistency. He's always had ability, he's always had strength, he's always had some, you know, domination in the air. I think he's really solid, man. He's a really, really solid player. Um, yeah, not, definitely. Not, not one of the best in his position, but he's mm. very consistent. And that's all you can ask. 
out of your center. That's backs. all you can ask for. That's all you need. The consistency. Yeah. If a player is very consistent, that's just what you need to get you over the line. But again, yeah, you have to say over over the years, yeah, the Dutch national team, yeah, has been so underwhelming in terms of the stars they're producing, in terms of the players, mm. the quality of players. Memphis Depay is still having a few day in that Dutch national He's team. A very I don't good player. Rate I've always guy. been a Marlin is still down there. Uh, you know. Uh, Daily Blind is still down there. Come on, man. That should actually a Manchester United reject for how many years <laughs> now? Hey, the Dally Blind, but again, Tony, is also Dally down Blind there too. Dumfries is looking good. You said? Daily Blind is a solid player, bro. He's a solid, solid player. I know he's not so, like, again, he's not. He's a Man United player. reject. That's how I look at Man United reject. I'm sorry, man. Well, but okay, just because you're a Man United reject doesn't. I, Angel Di Maria is a Man United reject. Would do you think he's had a great career in football? But do you think he is? He but Tony. Again, but again, after after he left Manchester United, he, he's been shit. Uh, same thing no, with um, uh, Alexis Angel Sanchez. Di Maria? He left. He Di left Maria. the football club. No, 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 no. Like Di Maria has not been yeah. shit since he left Man United. That's false. He's won a World Cup. He's won league titles with Paris Saint Germain. One That's for the national team. side. We're talking about the club side. Come on, man. Anyone, anyone is in contention of winning the World Cup when you're yeah, well, he was phenomenal for no, he's phenomenal for Paris Saint Germain. I'm not phenomenal buying that. Players. When you have the goat in your team, you can likely win the World Cup. Come on, man. With Messi okay, in your well, team, you can Maria was win so everything. instrumental in he's he, he's not been shit since he's left Man United. There's no way. This guy was one of the best players of the 2010s. No, I'm not calling the player shit. I, see, this stemmed from being a Manchester United reject. I said, since he left Manchester United, I don't think he's been able to replicate uh, what he has done for maybe probably a Real Madrid, uh, maybe what he has done for PSG a little bit. But again, man, he, I don't know. I, I don't just put him in, in those class of players, yeah? Mostly after his gas at the, in the Premiership. Mm. There's a different hey, way Memphis I look at Depay. flops. Memphis Depay the still had a very good. Memphis Depay still had a very good career post Manchester United. Still had a very but, good. But, career. but it didn't light up. It didn't light up Barcelona in it. Yeah, he's won trophies. Yeah, I get that. But he didn't. How many players have been really that successful at Barcelona? How many that? How many players? Uh, Tony, this is one of the most tumultuous eras of Barcelona for decades. Nobody's really mm. succeeding there consistently. You know, they're not challenging for champ. When was the last time Barcelona won Champions League? Fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, when they beat Juventus three 0 or something like that. That's the last time they won Champions League. So it's not Definitely. like Barca have been. Bar Barca have been kind of a a a. a you know, but they've been a mess. They've been a mess for a while. So, yeah, just because they don't work out. Bar I mean, Depay right now is a crucial player off the bench for Atletico Madrid. And when and if Morata or Griezmann aren't in form or aren't available, Depay is still a very good player. So, but I, I, I hear you. Well, the thing with the Dutch, Tony, they have a decent yeah. squad. I'm not saying it's amazing. I'm not saying it's world class, you know. Um, I'm not saying... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's incredible, but he's still got some very good players. I don't like the coach, Tony. Jerono Koeman is not a mm. good coach, bro. He is an average, mm. average coach. He's, an, he's an average, he's average better. manager. Louis very Van, average Louis Van manager. Gaal, Louis Van Gaal got more out of the Netherlands than than um than than Koeman ever will. But but again, yeah, I, I, again, I'm not totally sold on that Dutch national team. Personally, I, I still think that uh, uh, Dumfries isn't really, uh, you know, I, I don't really see the hype in him. Uh, you know, yeah, Marlon isn't that. really my kind of striker. I know Marlon isn't tearing good. up the league. Marlon, uh, Billy Blind Marlin's isn't my ideal good. kind of player yeah, down yeah. that midfield. Vermin isn't really, you know, tearing shit up. Uh, like, see, yeah, even if you want to criticize the manager, yeah. But I, I don't just think that the Netherlands used to have the kind of stars that could actually That's what I'm get saying, Tony. The I'm saying, I'm that saying, they used yeah, to have years ago. When you're talking about Schneider, you're yeah. talking about uh, uh, you know, lots of people. that these. Exactly. Yeah, yeah they, they had players. And, and Tony, that's why I preface by nothing. saying. That's Arjen why Robin. Arjen Robin. Van Nistelrooy. Yeah, you know, Robin. they had the players. 
Of course, mm. you have you have mm. um, but you still have like Van Dyke. You still have decent goalkeeper in in um in uh not Flecken. Fle- uh, Flecken's all right. You still have like a decent squad to yeah, work with. That's why I preface okay. Tony. Tony, that's why I preface by saying it's not their best squad. It's not their their greatest ever eleven. And but I'm saying Ronald Koeman doesn't get enough out of that team because I've seen mm. Louis Van Gaal do less. Do more with less. That's what I'd say about the Dutch. So big up Sheik as well. My well, guy Sheik. A Sheik TV is down here. DJ Crane is in the Ooh. house. See, yeah, guys, yeah. If you're in this channel, yeah, please go support a uh, uh, Sheik TV. He's also a channel, you know, on the come up too, yeah. And of course, I go there to support my guy. You know, we're also in the Sackers in TV family, you know, together. Right. Uh, he runs a match to United. Very credible guy, you know. And, um, you know, you I've brought him down here to the show. It's all love uh, between me <laughs> and this shit guy, too. And, you know, it's all good, yes. man. It's all good. I can't wait yes. to see him, uh, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow when I'm, uh, you know, when I when I would uh, talk to these people, yeah, and this Manchester yeah. United fans about this main old stuff, yeah. You know, it, oh, bro, shit TV. You better be careful, man. How are you guys here? Wait, Colin Tony, Mayer, hold on, hold on. What's your, wait, wait. The Tony, next what's big your... thing after Zek Fabric. Oh, my days. We, we, we have to have words, yeah? We have to have words. We have to have words. Uh, yeah, you want to say something, man? What's your thoughts <laughs> on Kobe Mayno? He's a good player, but... Uh, yeah, that's all man. I'm, man. He's yeah. a good player, but it doesn't mean that... What has he done to make us call him generational player? What has he done for us to... Give him that nomenclature, world class player. Come on, man! I'm not buying that crap. Yeah, he's but not Tony, a class let's have the qu- he's not generational Tony, in any Tony, way. What is Tony, this, Tony? What, what does flawless about? Tony? What does flawless tell you? What does flawless tell you all the time? He wants Stop. Arsenal fans to drink the Kool Aid. Let oh, Man United man. fans it... drink the bro. Let Man so, United so, fans. So, so, man, so Mano is generational to you now. Let no, 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 don't, 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 Zach Fabregas. Oh, oh my what days. I say, this what guys are I taking say, a shit. Do what these guys I, think we're donuts or something? Tony, listen to what I'm saying. You're not talking with the Man United fans on Twitter that want to way over hype the guy. You're talking to me right now. Mm, my I get, thoughts I get that, man. Man. It, my get on Kobe Manu. My nerves. They get on my nerves. They get on my, my nerves. thoughts on Kobe Manu. He's a very promising young player. And he looks to have a promising future. He looks like an exciting player. I think there are a lot of qualities. That Shout out to Oregon Gunner, man. Big up to uh, Oregon Gunner. I don't know if he's generational or not because I haven't seen enough of him. If people want to jump to those conclusions, Tony, let them get gassed. Tony, remember when remember when Man United fans got gassed about that front three a few years ago <laughs> yeah. that they had? Rashford, Martial, Greenwood. Exactly. exactly. Outside of Mason Greenwood, what have them three guys done? <laughs> Man so United far. fan, Tony. Man United fan drank that cool. Now they, now they, they want thought, Rashford out. Now they want yeah. Rashford out. And Martial is going to leave for nothing. For nothing. Oh my days. They thought he could win a Ballon d'Or, Tony. Some of them mm. thought they could win a Ballon d'Or. Let them get gassed. Let them get mm. overexcited. And if he fails, then they look like idiots. That's what I would say about it, Tony. Like, he's a oh very promising young player. But if they want to say he's generational and the best in the world and all this stuff, oh let, them get, let them oh, get gassed. Let them get gassed. Generation. Because, oh, my Tony, days. Tony, I, see, you know I'm why? Shut down my- yesterday but because when i you know when i keep seeing these things yeah it hurts it hurts me it hurts me i just saw one guy he was just saying um this is the next uh, big thing since zach fabric 
are you comparing him to Zach Fabricius? Oh, this guy's drunk. Yeah, and let that let them do that because Man United drunk. hasn't been that good. Oh, over you the drunk? Year. Let them get gas. Oh my drunk. days, Tony! You take things so serious. But see, serious. Steve, Steve, Let see where I'm coming gas. from. See where I'm coming from. Yeah, let's see, we're still in. See, we're still in that conversation on if Bukayo Saka is is a world class player. Yeah, I I see the stick that guy gets. Yeah, everywhere this guy's been abused. Even 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 the Manchester, abuse. even even the Manchester United uh, uh, legend Ferdinand. Live in some cheap aeroplane he was in, yeah. Talking with some random people in the aeroplane and and and, and talking about <laughs> Saka not being a world class player, yeah. Bitching about a young kid who's doing this thing who's carried Arsenal for the past three four seasons mm. and is out there saying that this guy's not a world class player. But when it comes to Mayno, it's different. Yeah. It's a world class player. People are gobbling that up. It's a generational right. player. They're right. gobbling that up. Right. And, and, and that's what I will not stand for. That you know, bring down Bukayo Saka because he plays for Arsenal Football Club. And then, you know, herald Mayno as the next big thing. Uh, you know, oh my days. Comparing him to Zek Fabricates right now. And he hasn't won a trophy. He hasn't done anything. He's just got a match to United over the line in some certain kind of games. Come on, man. It, 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 it's Tony, not good enough. Bad. Let it's 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 not that. it's not good enough, man. And and you know I will test uh I, I, you know I will test uh uh um uh, uh flawless tomorrow. You know I'll test this gangster Tony, tomorrow. Tony, I'll Tony, ask him face to face. On there, I'm going to ask him. Tony, right and, now. And Tony, if, he, if he shakes his bum, if he shakes his bum for me, no, yeah, like that. You know I will clip him. I will. Well, what clip if he him. does? What if he does? I'll clip him. What if he does? No, I'll clip him. Oh, does? thank God. Because does? right now, you of course, him? you saw the hype they all, all right? gave Rashford, yeah? Right now, all of them want Rashford out. They want him out yeah. of the team. So, they, they so want Tony, they want him as let far them get gas. Gets let them go to over traffic. the top. Let them say stupid things. You can clip them and laugh at them if the, if he ends up failing. Uh, the, no, but I'm just saying that it hurts. I'm just saying that it hurts. Why does it hurt? It's, it, it's easy to, you know, it's easy to criticize Bukayo Saka, call him shit, say that he's not doing anything, say that he's past his best, say that he's not a world-class player. Even the legend is out there putting dust on Bukayo Saka's name. But there, suddenly, you know, Mayno comes out and is the next big thing. The, it, that fabric is, so comparison is the one that makes me pull wait, my wait, hair. Wait, wait. Why are you so concerned about what people say about Bukayo Saka? We all know he's a good player. If people he's are an saying Arsenal he's player. Not, I'm an Arsenal if fan. Are not, if How people, about that? If people I'm an Arsenal are fan. not if people are not are saying he is not a good player, then why are you Pick even up DJ listening? Crane. To them? They are clearly chatting, they're clearly chatting shit. So why do you mm. what what I just don't know why you take people seriously sometimes. Like some people are not meant to be taken seriously. Like some people just say, I know, stupid I, I, know I know, I know. It's just the, the, they uh, the audacity, the temerity, uh, you know, of these guys and 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 how they put it, how they say it. It's uh, bro, oh my god, how we no, 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 why did I, it bother you so much about what people say about soccer? Me and you both know he's a really good player, okay? Right, no problem. No, 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 no. Tony, I want you to answer that because I'm curious. I'm curious why. No, he's, why? he's an Arsenal player. I like Bukayo Saka. Yeah, he might he might too. not be totally consistent, player. but he has actually carried us Arsenal. But yes. he has got over the line for the past two, three so seasons. Why are you worried about people? With the why are you Bukayo. worried about people? When Trot tried to run in last season, yeah. When Trot tried to run in last season in the internationals, he scored very, very important goals for for yeah. England. Oh. Yeah, he, he scored very important goals for England. He, he plays quite well. He's, he's always in that starting exile for England. Why Why are they putting dust on his name? And still, yes, Tony, why when do you Mayno care? just has, why do you Mayno care has, Mayno has a, you know, a good Tony. performance for England on the first Tony. day. And, Tony. oh, they Tony. want him there. Always Tony. the next big thing. Always better than soccer. Oh, we should be there. Oh, he has etched his name in that England ex. Oh, my God. Tony, why do you Bro, care? The kind of things people, I was seeing. Why on... do you care if people don't rate soccer or do? We all know the truth. 
We all know that he's a very good player. People who don't say he's a very good player, then why are you listening to them? Because they're clearly not. They 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 clearly are just trying to wind you up. No, no, it's you not. Whoa, 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 hold on. You realize that people believe are, it. Tony, Tony, Tony. No, no you know but they I'm believe saying? it. How do you they know believe they believe it? it? How do you know they believe no, because it? Because they're saying it and they're saying it multiple times. Who? They believe Who? it. They internalize it. And these podcasters are saying the same thing. They're gobbling the same news. They're peddling the same news. And Who? you know what? Yeah. I, see, we, we see, yeah. I've heard many podcasters, yeah, talk about like this Mano kid. Talk, uh, uh, why should I start calling names? Why should I call names? I shouldn't be because calling I names. Want to have a reference but, the, but the way they're hyping this guy. What they said. I'm trying but to, the way I'm trying they're to... hyping this guy, yeah, it looks like the next big thing. And he's not the next big thing. Okay. It's just the Let player that's down. good. That's nice. That's okay. Yeah. And he hasn't won a trophy to actually edge his name in that, you know, in that yeah. box yep. for us to say, yep. okay, it's here. It's here. It, right. It's proven. Right. I, I don't see it. Oh, I don't let see them it. get gassed. Let them get good. over it. Good. I did. Okay, good and okay. Let them get gas. But why put in Dustin Bukhari Saka's name and and and, and put in uh, anybody uh, you doing know, it? Put in and, and, and and putting up. First of all, uh, they don't. Hold on, hold on. Boy. First of all, uh, one of them is a God, midfielder. Tiring, one of them. Man. Wait, why do the two relate to each other? One of them's a midfielder. And one of them's a winger. I, I know in, in terms of impact, in terms of what he's done under a short period of time, and they're now like saying, hey, uh, this is the next big thing, bigger than Bukayo Saka. Uh, you know, uh, bro, I, I've seen so many words on Twitter about these things, yeah? I, and it, it genuinely hurts me. Mostly the wait, way they're kind of like putting Bukayo Saka again. down. Say that, again. To... say that again. Say that again. Where did you see that from? <laughs> where did you say that? Where did, where bro, did you see bro. that? This is crucial. Yeah, no, it's crucial in the conversation. But, yeah, where did you but, see but, these yeah, Manchester United, United fans? But again, on where? Manchester United on where? Fans. On what platform? On on Twitter. <laughs> Come oh! on, man. Oh! <laughs> All right, Tony. Tony. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't act, do act as if Twitter isn't. Don't act as if Twitter isn't. You know, isn't where the ball is playing. Social media. What do we know about that, man? But again, let, let's don't about- act to sit. Let's don't act to sit. Let's don't. Uh, but see, yeah, uh, see. But again, Steve Mahala. Let's don't act to sit. You've not man. heard. Let's not act to sit. You've not heard. You, get rattled. Uh, you know, other YouTubers you get call Mano the next big thing. Come on, man. You've you heard. You've, you've, heard you've, you've heard your faves. You've heard your faves talk about Mano. You've heard about. You, you've heard them say it. You've heard them. Rattled. You know, hype this guy. Yeah, and exactly. I think so, it's funny when people do too much. I think it's really funny. I think it's okay. really, really funny. Just like how I think it's funny when people say Bukayo Saka is 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 ass or Jeremy Doku's ass or whoever. It's like I don't think they are, and I think that's silly to you know to to say that personally. So like Tony, sometimes we don't agree with things. Like sometimes you see things online that yeah you don't agree with them. It's like okay, let let you know everybody has different opinions, man. I'm saying, like, yeah, they have, I, I, and I respect, and I respect it. But come on, man. Yeah. Next and some people thing, have opinions. Next some people, thing, Tony. After some Zach people, Fabri- oh, Tony, my days. Some oh. people, Tony, have crazy opinions, and they do it on purpose to get reactions out of you but, and others. But, but, but again, do you know you're what falling for yeah. their games? Personally, I even do think that Cole Palmer has even had a better season than this Mano guy. Wait, Why wait, no wait, 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 Why are we comparing a midfielder with wait, 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 Why are we comparing a midfielder with a winger? No, no, no. We're not. We're not. See, we're, we're comparing their impact. Their impact for their teams, not their positions in their teams, but, no, but the impact they've created in their team. So, so there, there are two different things. Even with the same yeah. uh, Bukayo Saka argument, it's not about the position he plays in his team. It's about if he's a world-class player. That has been the argument. That he's not a world-class player. Good. If I don't think he's me, a world-class okay, class I agree. player yet. He's not a world-class player. But don't put don't dust think he's on a his world name. Class don't put dust yet. on what the guy has done. 
He's carried the team over three years. Has Mano done that consistently for three seasons no. in the Man in Manchester United? No. Sure. It's no. That's why. Then let the kid grow. Why yes. compare him to Zach Fabregas? Why yes. compare him to Edin Hazard? Yes. Why compare him to all these yes. legends? Yeah. Oh, oh, days. Yeah. Oh. It's no, knackering. No, it's no, tiring. No. It, 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 no. Bro. Bro, they do that on purpose. They do it on purpose to get reactions out of you and 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 others. They do it on but, but they're not putting those statements out for me. It, 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 it's a general, yeah, they are because they it, want it's a general statement. Battle. It's not for me. And many people that's, see, that's see behind that bullshit. You. Yes, well, it's no problem, man. For you. I, it's definitely I, for you. I, I, I want words. I want words with flawless. I want words with Floyd. Wait, 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 they hate him. They don't like him. You know, see, but two, three years ago, oh, he was your darling. He was a world-class player, and he was that good. So, you know, yeah, see, yeah, we'll know about that. I don't even want to talk too much. I just want Arsenal to win the title. Then these guys will hear from me. Chic TV will hear from me. Flawless will hear from me. All these guys will hear from me. You know, and then they will tell me how world-class Mayna is. You know, but I, I'll just drop that, man, because we can go... On and on talking about this, man. See, uh, 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 Steve Mahala, Euro 2024 group stages on overdrive right here, right now. What do you think? Shout out to Chic TV who's in the chat. DJ Crane is in the house. Big up to you, man. Drew Gunners is still down here, you know, uh, uh, keeping up with us. Oregon Gunner is still down here. Can you smell what the Oregon Gunners can? See, look at this group. Yeah, which is the group? of death personally i do think that the group of death down here is that group d it's looking tantalizing man lots of amazing matches to come up in the summer uh, you know what do you say about this uh, group stages man and um you know which ones are the most sketchy ones and how would you rate um england's um you know picks down here uh in group c yeah i mean look i'll start out in group a um, I think Germany, they have to advance out of this. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky dealing with Hungary and Switzerland. Mm. Um, Scotland have been dropping off very badly recently under Stevie Clark, so I'm not. I I, I don't really expect too much out of them in the tournament, to be honest. Um, while I do mm. think Hungary and and uh, uh, Switzerland can definitely take points off of um the, you know I think I think Scotland will probably lose to Hungary, Switzerland and Germany. I don't I don't I don't think they're playing very well. Um mm -hmm. Germany should be able to get out of the group, but Hungary and Switzerland are tough tough teams to play against. You know, Hungary, you know, we're on an unbeaten run of 14 games in all competitions. Say what you want about the opposition. That's still very good to mm -hmm. be unbeaten. I mean, France just lost, so you know, it, it can happen to anybody at any time. So, um, big up to back of back of is down here with us. That's a very big no, friend no. of mine, big friend of the channel too. Big up to you, bag of, and of all of you know what bag of done has done for me on this channel. Yeah, big ups is one of those who helped this channel grow. You know, big up to you, bag of man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so in terms of group A, I would have Germany and uh, Hungary getting out of the group. Uh, group B, mm. uh, very interesting. Because I think Spain, Croatia, Italy are not that far apart in quality. Albania have done ter uh, tremendously well to qualify, um, and I do think they will give some problems to those three other top sides. And the and those you know those those three sides will take points off each other. So Albania, if they can get a win, they put themselves in contention to get out of that group of death for them for sure. Um, but I do yeah. fancy. Spain and Croatia to get out of the group. In terms of Group C, yeah, England will mm. probably top it. I'd probably go with Serbia to get second place out of there because Serbia, Denmark, yeah. But, yeah. But do you think Denmark will create any buzz at all? Uh, you know, 
Denmark. Yeah. The, uh, Denmark usually what? have what? a good run. Uh, they usually have good yeah. runs in competitions. Uh, you know, at least I saw them uh, have that run in the World Cup. You know, they were looking good uh, when it comes to the, you know, to the uh, to, to big competitions. You know, they always tend to, uh, you know, get out of the group stage. So uh, this might be a banana skin uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, scenario for England, uh, mostly if they underrate Serbia and, and, and Denmark. Mm. Yeah, and also, I mean, Slovenia just beat Portugal last night 2 nothing. So <laughs> Exactly, <Slovenia>. man. <laughs> yeah, there's some potential banana skin kind Slovenia, of games in that yeah, group for stage. Slovenia, for but me, I it's not think, sealed. No, I think England will probably get through that group pretty easily. Um, but they could they could screw up. Look, I don't I don't rate England. I don't think they'll win the tournament. I don't I think they'll make the quarterfinals. I don't think they'll make the semifinal or the final. Um but yeah, they should get out of that group, I would think. Group D got a very strong group. Mm. Um France will definitely get out of it. And it's between those three of who can get out of it. I I rule out Poland. Um I don't think I don't think we're very good at all. You know, in the 120 minutes last night when we played Wales to qualify for the tournament, no shots on goal. Zero. Through 120 minutes, zero shots on goal. Zero. So we won on penalties. It's terrific. Very happy that we that we qualified, obviously. But I'm not expecting very much from the, the tournament, to be honest. Um, and Austria, for me, yeah. are probably the second team I would pick to get out of the group uh because like i said with the netherlands i don't rate ronald Koeman whatsoever um i don't i don't mm. think he's a very good manager so i would i would go france and austria group e is wait 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 poland. hold up hold up hold yeah. up hold up yeah, wait on. you're not even putting poland in that contention no the one no. the one oh, come no on, bro no are you serious not at all Tony, Tony, you can't get shots on target against fucking Wales. Zero shots on target in 120 minutes. How are we supposed to test those three defenses? But but again, it, but again, it's not in the competition, right? It's not in a competitive competition, right? I, I just don't I do think, think they would step up. I, I do think they would step up. I do think they would step up. They do have the players to actually carry them. They do have yeah, well, Tony, two players who are Tony, how often Nigeria. have we said that? Tony, how often have we said that about Poland? They have the players. They have Lewandowski. They have Piotr Zielinski. They have mm. Promyshov Frankowski. They have Wojciech Szczesny, who's a very good goalkeeper. He does his best yeah. every single time for the national team and for Juventus. <laughs> Wojciech Szczesny, yeah. Definitely. How many times? Can you, though, can Tony, you remember their new left back? Do you know, do you know their new left Malcolm back now? Kibior as do you well. know their Malcolm new left Kibior. back? From yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I told exactly, you, I said he was a decent exactly. player as well. I said he was a decent player, and it would take him some time to adapt. I said it would take some time. So you uh, said that. Yeah, you said. I you like... said that. Uh, uh, see, Steve, it's very good that you said these things, yeah, because there's one player we didn't talk about, yeah, and it's very good you brought this up, and it's this issue about Kai Havertz, yeah. Uh, see, yeah, uh, uh, the regulars down here know, knew what I said about this guy. You know, I hated yeah. on him. I, you know, mostly after he didn't pass my test after 10 games, I Iterated, threw dust on yeah, this yeah. guy. I didn't give him a chance after 10 games. Uh, you know, I followed the bandwagon and said he is shit. You know, I dispelled him. I, I cast him off. You know, every name on the book I gave this guy. Yeah. But see what he's doing in the internationals. Even Nagelsmann. That's why I asked you if he was a world-class manager. Even Nagelsmann believes in this guy and is actually giving him a number nine rebirth yep. from left, from playing left left back. Make this make sense, yeah? To the leader of that team, to the number nine of that team. That's a big shout, yeah? I mean... He's doing yeah. it in the internationals. He's scoring in the internationals. M mind you, since January, he's been scoring goals. At mm -hmm. Arsenal, he's been scoring goals. He's been given assists. And I only gave him 10 games at the start of the season. And he's making us look like absolute donuts. Same thing with this Kivio guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, you know, with you know, with my other guys who come down to my show. And and we, we all said, even DJ Crane, you know, 
come on, man. All the Arsenal fans down here, uh, the uh, 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 Bants, all of us, yeah, we all said, this guy's shit. Get him out of the football club. We don't want to see him. But right now, look at what he's doing. He's actually <laughs> making us look like donuts. I, I know DJ Crane won't admit it. I know Bant won't admit it. I know other Arsenal fans won't admit it. I know <laughs> Drew Gunners won't admit it. But he's making us look like donuts right now. He's putting up defeating performances. He's looking good. It doesn't. It looks far, far, far from the player that he was at Spezia. Yeah? He's walked straight into his national team, although he was a starter in his national yeah. team. Right now, they now have big options. They can now fix him in that centre-back position, which was his normal mainstay before uh, Mikel Arteta actually started using him in that right-back position. Three. Because, exactly. So now he can play left-back for his team. Now he can play as a central defender. And you know what? For Spezia, they also pushed him to protect the back four. He was lying deeper in, in that CDM role, but more deeper and it was protecting the back four. That's so time. they now have a player, exactly. So now they now have a player who could play centre-back. They now have a player who could play left-back. They now have a player who could actually just sit back and just relax and protect the back four mm. in Kibio. And it's all thanks to the development at Arsenal. Yep. So, oh, so, so Poland have lots of players, like you said, Zelinski, uh, Lewandowski, Kivio now on the main stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're looking but good. The problem is, Tony, we've been saying this for years. We'll check the Chesney. They're looking good. Tony, mm. we've been saying this. We've been saying this about Poland for years. 2018 World Cup, they were getting hyped. Guess what we did against Japan, Senegal, and I forget the other team in our group. We finished bottom. We finished bottom mm. of the group. Like, we don't perform in yeah. tournaments very well at all. Hungary, Hungary, I'm, I'm much, much, much more optimistic about. So I just don't, yeah, I think for the top two in Group D, it's Austria and France. And uh, obviously mm. France top in Austria second. Um, yeah. And then Group uh, E. Uh, see, uh, see, 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 Steve, uh, this is an example of what I'm saying. This is an example of what yeah, I'm he saying. He does have you rattled. Yeah. He does. Watch. No, he no, does. no, just he watch. Actually does. See, Menno got this man rattled. And see, yeah, he does. look at what he said. My baller. My baller. Yeah, My baller. Yeah. Then look, look at what follows that. Look at the disrespect that follows that. Saka and war class, though. See, see, look at that. Look, look. That's what I'm talking about. The disrespect. You know, the, he just scored me, you know, my baller. And then look at the disrespect that follows that. There's no difference between this and he's, he's and, and guys, don't get me wrong. I love shit TV. He's a seasoned podcaster, even if it's, uh, you know, quite new to the scene. But I, I do respect him. Uh, but apart from that, it, but this is what I'm talking about. Even seasoned, even people who even understand more about football are gassing out this guy and comparing him, you know, to this is what see, yeah. This thing makes me want to just pull the remaining hair out of my head. It, it, it gets me. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> you're so easy, Tony. You're so easy to wind up sometimes. It's hilarious. <laughs> I give up, man. I give up. This is this is what I'm talking about. This is what this is what I'm talking about. This this is what I'm talking about. It hurts me. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. But oh, I can no tell. Problem. I can we'll tell. No, I can we, tell. we keep going. I can tell it hurts. We keep going. I can no tell, problems. Bro. It hurts. No, bro. But this hurts, man. You, you can imagine, man. You know, uh, uh, Mayno, my player, is a baller, though. He, he, he's a good guy. He's a better, he's a good player. But when it comes to Arsenal and Bukayo Saka, it's the negative that comes out first. It's not a world class. No, no, no. Do, do you see the drift? Yeah. From, oh, Mayno is a, Mayno is a good player. He's a great player. He looks good. He's yeah. just 18 years old. He's just 18 years old, you know, you know, in that shit TV accent. You know, it's, it's, a, oh. Oh. And then when it comes to Bukayo Saka, yeah, world class. Though. Oh my days! This is 
bro. Yeah, this, and, and Tony. Shit TV, it rattles me, man. It rattles me. It, yeah, it, it does. It hurts. Yeah, it does. It At least you admit it. It does. it does. It does. It does. <laughs> it rattles me. It rattles me. But anyway, let's get out of that, man. Uh, Salah is a right winger who is world class. <laughs> you see? And he's even giving uh, uh, Salah, of course, well, no problem, man. No problem, man. No problem. Uh, okay, Group E. What about Group E, man? Belgium, now, Slovenia, Romania, Ukraine. Now, I think Belgium will have enough to get out of this. I'm not convinced by them. Um, but I do think they'll, they're strong enough to get in over above Slovensko and Romania and, and Ukraine. So, um, I, yeah, I think Belgium will get the first place. I'll go for Slovakia. Belgium, yeah. I'll go for Slovakia to get out Slovakia. of that group. Yeah, I think I think they can get o yeah over I'm Ukraine. Not, I'm not convinced over Ukraine. With Ukraine, bro. I'm not over the Modrics, over the Modrics, over the Zichenko. Yeah, I'm not convinced with Ukraine. Wow, I'm not fully convinced with Ukraine. Wow. Um, I love their goalkeeper okay. Anatoly Trubin at Benfica, one of my favorite goalkeepers yeah. to watch right now. I like Trubin a lot. Yeah, you know I like mm -hmm. some of their players, but center back wise. I think they're very poor. And Slovakia, for me... Even in Mama Flossy. Big up to Mama Flossy. And big oh, up no, to no, Sebastian, no. who's in the charts too. Yeah. Facts. But, yeah, I like, I'll like. i go for a bit of an upset. I'll, I'll say Slovakia get out of the group. Alongside Belgium. Mm. Um, because, yeah, I just don't think Ukraine or... Yeah. Yeah. He's... He's... he's uh, yeah. Ukraine. I don't know. They're just... They... Mm. they they're just not very convincing. Just not very convincing, but yeah. Um, and then Group F is very the interesting. Group F. Mm. Turkey are another one of those teams where people think there could be a dark horse candidate. Um, and Portugal are obviously probably top three best squads in the world, to be honest. Um, Czech Republic mm. are decent as well, and Georgia making their debut. As well at a at a major tournament. So shout out to Georgia. I watched the the game yesterday versus Greece. They won on penalties. Great scenes in in Georgia. So yeah, they got a really really good team. Georgia um, for, for you know they're they're it's like an upcoming generation of very promising players. So very very excited to see how they can do. That you know their first match is going to be versus Turkey at the Westfalen Stadion yeah. at Borussia Dortmund's ground in front of eighty thousand. Georgians and Turks, so that's going to be a very, very uh, big occasion for 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 their country. So, looking forward to see how they do. Um, I do think. Um, hmm. Portugal probably finished first. Portugal. I'm hmm. not convinced with Turkey okay. either. I'm not convinced with Turkey. Yeah, I'm. Though. I'm not convinced with Turkey, too. I'm not convinced with the Czech Republic, so I'll go Georgia second place. Hmm. I'll take Georgia. Shout out to Ladimus Prime. Big up to Ladimus Prime, man. Ladimus, how are you doing? Hope you're okay, man. Happy Easter to you, Ladimus Prime, man. Big up to you. Nice to see your face down here on the channel, man. Big up to you. And hopefully one day, you know, we'll have a debate on my channel, too, man. Big up to yeah. you. And thanks for showing up, man. Yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, Group F, who are your takes in that Group F? I'll go Portugal top, Georgia second place. Georgia yeah. second place. Not yep. Turkey, not Czech. Nope. Nope. I think the Czech, the Czech draw with Denmark. Uh, no, they with Norway. No, did they draw with Norway? Did they beat Norway? Yeah, they beat them two to one recently, yeah. They beat them two to one, right? Yeah. So, come on, man. <laughs> this is the same Czech Republic team, though, that got beat by Albania three nothing. Mm. So, mm. but look, they have good players. I like Adam Flozhuk. I like <clears throat> Patrick Schick. I like Václav Cherny at, at Wolfsburg. Um, I think they've got some good players. Sochuk as well. Uh, Alex Kral mm. at Union Berlin. Sidelak. <laughs> At FC Twente is having a great season. Twente in general having a great season. I just, I'm still not convinced. Defensively is where I think they've got problems for me. Um, 
Yeah. But yeah. I think um I think I think yeah, I'll go with Georgia to make an upset. I'll go second place for yeah. Georgia first. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Um Bagdub says here yeah, Tony and Drake got lots in common. One wraps it up and Tony takes it up. Oh uh, my days. No, uh, see here, uh, guys. I, I didn't say that chick. I've said that you know, Mayno is world class. He didn't say so, but you know, but again, he is kind of like you know, propped up this guy. And when it comes to uh, uh, Bukayo Saka, immediately after that statement, my player, a good player, better player, you know, great player, whatever, whatever. And immediately after that, but Bukayo Saka is in world class, though. Come on, man. We see, we oh, see wow. behind. We see behind these narratives, yeah? We understand what you guys are trying to do. We understand it, you know? But again, we'll just... See, you know what, yeah? I I'm going to clip all these things, yeah? I'll go to each... <laughs> see, you guys are already my guys, yeah? I'm talking of Chic TV and Flawless. So, you know, I'll clip you guys talking about this guy. I would go to... I'll go to you guys' channels, yeah? Yeah? And I'll clip you guys up and, and just... Check up, you know, check where you guys have heralded this guy and shook your booms for this guy. And then I will clip it up and then I'll play at it maybe in the next two, three seasons. Because you know what? Yeah, Steve Mahala, I don't really think that Mayno is in the best club to develop him. Come on, man. I mean, the roofs are leaking. Come on, man. The swimming pools are dirty and rustic. Uh, the, the toilets are filled with pee and, 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 and you know, and, 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 and poo everywhere on the toilets. You know, everywhere is leaking. The stadiums are leaking. Uh, you know, the developments can't go. You know, can't come in down there. No player in the in the last five six seasons have developed serially in Manchester United. Um, the manager isn't a world class manager. I don't rate the manager in Ten Hag for crying out loud. It's a toxic environment. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's the right place for Mayno to actually develop his football. How about that? Yeah. But these guys aren't talking about that. They're not talking about fixing their leaking roofs, but they're all out here talking about world-class player and who's not a world-class player. Oh, my days. Bro, I, I, I don't know, man. It was someone that just sent it to me, and then I started checking Twitter and started seeing all these things about Mayno. And, oh, my God. Bro, I nearly deleted Twitter yesterday. This is how words get to me sometimes, man. I, I, like I nearly deleted the I saw I was seeing down there, man. Comparing these guys to killers and assassins, and he's just played for them for six months. And oh my days, man! It was Steve Mahala, Arsenal, back in the yeah. Premiership. See Steve yeah. Mahala, yeah. I've been talking about this thing, yeah. Um, of course we'll soon be going, but. What do you think um, about this uh, Manchester City versus Arsenal? Arsenal go into the den, uh, you know, of Lions, yeah, down there, uh, you know, at the 80 had to go face Manchester City. W what's your take, uh, uh, you know, in this matchup? What do you think? I mean, um, I think you guys have a – you guys have got a good chance of, of definitely getting a point or maybe three against them, definitely. I think Man City are mm. favourites. But they did sustain some very, you know, not so good injuries to John Stones and Kyle Walker. Those two guys are mm. very important to that team. So you have to convert. You have to take this opportunity. You have to take this moment. Otherwise, yeah. I think you don't win the title. I did think you need to win at the Eddie had to to win the league. Because I to think win that's the like, league, right? Yeah, mm. that's what I think. I've heard other Arsenal fans say this. I've seen Troop say this. I've seen Za say this. I've seen a few other Arsenal fans say, yeah. it's a win, nothing else. If we don't win... It's a win or a bust. If we don't win, yeah. it's it, it's gone. I, I also believe that. If we if we don't yeah. win against Manchester City, it's off. We need to go in and win that matchup, man. It's very important. And there are reasons to why I'm saying this. Because, Steve, yeah, I'm tired of allowing all these bootleg teams here yeah, to... To actually help us out, and you know, mostly as we're challenging on the road uh, uh, to, to this title, yeah, because these other teams will melt, absolutely melt, you know, at the presence of Manchester City and at the presence of Liverpool. Mm -hmm. They won't do nothing. We, we've seen it last they season. This is going to help us. They bring that exactly. Exactly. You know, this these guys here yeah, will just absolutely melt in front of City and Liverpool. Yep. 
With Arsenal, it's a different thing. Uh, you know, they will come to play. But with, you know, with City and Liverpool, they will just do a number on them. And they have, and people tend to forget that Manchester City and Liverpool are the most experienced, at least in the last six, seven years, mostly yeah. in title run-ins. Yeah. So they have a big experience in the run-in. Man City, uh, you know, the best at that. So if Arsenal doesn't go down there to the, uh, you know, to City to win, I'm sorry, man. It won't be looking good. Then we might just be winning by a stroke of luck, and that uh, that if maybe some certain kind of uh, uh, clubs go take points from Liverpool and City, and to and to be very sincere with you, City have an even more easier run into the title. Run in, mm. like they don't have bigger teams to face. I think they face most of the big teams. I think they only have Aston Villa to face. They face Chelsea already, a boogie team uh, for them. Uh, um, I think um, have they faced Tottenham on Spurs in the return leg? No, not yet, not yet. No, I think I, I think that's the only one that they have. But we too Spurs, Spurs play Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man City coming up. But yeah, again, that's what I'm saying. So they play all of us. So you know, it doesn't matter if if they beat them and we go to Wahalin and go lose. So we need to win that game too. But again, in, um, Tottenham Hotspurs have 14 days of rest before they meet yeah. Arsenal in the not London Derby. Arsenal within that 14 days have four games to play mm -hmm. in 14 days. No, nope. including nope. that that crucial game against Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, you know, at, not, at the not London Derby. So, bro, man, it's going to be very, very difficult for Arsenal. But again, man, I, I, I do feel we should go into that Etihad and win that matchup. It should be a very, very tasty one because I do think that uh, a City isn't the city of last season. I still think that they have clear vulnerabilities. I still do think that, uh, you know, uh, the license with which Pep Guardiola has given uh, to John Stones to roam, uh, you know, within that team, I do think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, it might, it, it might, it might be a problem come Sunday. Mm. So, um, John Stones, please roam away, roam away, yeah, roam around, roam away. You know, I, I can't wait for you to do that and leave uh, uh, Diaz exposed down there and Kai Havertz to just, you know. Uh, 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 make some certain kind of runs and lay off some certain kind of passes uh, uh, to just get over the line and get us some goals down there. So, John Stones, you know, roam away, roam away. Uh, and also, I also do think that City will also be wary with what Arsenal will be bringing, mostly with our, our, our wide players. Because, uh, you know, uh, playing from the wide areas will also bring the much-needed threat that Arsenal we need in that matchup. I, I want to see a Martinelli who is up and fired up for that game. I want to see a Bukayo Saka who doesn't just want to score goals, but who wants to get himself into challenges, uh, uh, you know, yeah. run at Manchester City. Manchester City is that team that doesn't like to be run up, uh, you know, against getting behind their defenders, you know, right now. Now, most of their players uh, are played in, in this internationals. Most of them are tired. Most of them are wary. Uh, John Stones, I think he had a knock if I'm correct, Walker, they said he's injured. I know it's all lies and mind games on Pep Guardiola, but anyway, I, I, I don't know, you know, he, let's he got, see what happens. He got hooked off right away for England, Tony. He got hooked off right away. <laughs> but anyway, let's see what happens. But I can't wait for John Stone to just keep roaming. Roam away, brother. Roam away. Uh, you know, and let's see what Arsenal bring from the wide uh, from the wide areas. And we're coming there with a factor that we didn't have last season when they slapped us up at the eighty had Declan Bright. Uh, you know, he'll protect our back four. He'll play more disciplined. I don't think he'll be, uh, you know, going box to box and uh, uh, leaving his number six position and, and, and roaming to that number eight. I, I think he'll be more disciplined. And uh, if we do have Jorginho, uh, who's down there, I don't know how tired Jorginho looks right now. But, uh, you know, because he played for in that Italy game, but I wanted to be calm and composed in that game, uh, you know, help uh, Declan Rice out. I also do think that we also have a joker in the jackpot down there in Thomas Park. Okay? If we don't need his expertise, if Jorginho isn't really putting in the yeah. work, we can be able to 
exactly call on the expertise of Thomas Partey, who has had some few games under his belt right now, so he should be fully fit for this matchup. I want to see a Kai Havertz, who literally used to cause problems in the heart of defences. Yeah. He might not be the most prolific player, but he's that kind of guy that will cause problems, uh, you know, uh, you know, around uh, attacking positions yeah. and in the uh, opposition's uh, final third. So let's see. And see uh, uh, Steve Mahala. I don't know why many people don't want to recognize this, but Arsenal have, uh, uh, you know, the best centre back pairings, yeah, in the whole of Europe. Uh, many people would not, uh, you know, uh, 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 like what I just said right now, but that's what I feel. That's what I think, and um, the proof is in the pudding to back that up. Uh, uh, because if they say that the Premiership is the best league in the world and the best defensive uh, uh, team in the league right now this season is Arsenal Football Club conceded lesser goals scored more goals than any other team in the league this season uh, see man I think we should start putting respect on this guy's name mostly in our defense and let's see uh, you know that so with all the things I've just said we will be telling Manchester City come Sunday this is what we're bringing to the table this is how we're looking this is the threat we're bringing to the Etihad and the question yeah. will fall back Guardiola and he'll be, you know, we will go there and say, this is what we're coming with. We're coming with this amount of players. We're coming with this threat. We're coming with these people down here. Manchester City, what are you coming with on the day, on Sunday? Personally, that's what I think. I mean, Tony, for me, I don't, I think you definitely have one of the best center back partnerships in Europe, no doubt. But if I look at Inter Milan, and they're back three, which have depth, which I, I think is the icebreaker because you have Bissek, you have Pavad, you have uh, Bastoni, who's a high, high quality yeah. player. You have De Vries and you have a Cherby. That's a solid, solid five. The problem is with Arsenal's overall center backs is not those two, Gabriel yeah. and Saliba. You know what I think of them, Tony. You've known me for a while. You know how highly I rate William yeah. Saliba. I rated William Saliba before it was cool to rate William Saliba mm. in France. At I it's agree. On, I agree. It's on Etienne and Oje Senis. I like this guy a lot. And I, I recognize for a few years, this is a very talented <laughs> defender. And Gabriel Magalaj as well, that Lille. I was a fan of this. I thought there were some faults, but they were things that he could work out. And he's improved, I think. Every Shout out, Malia. Are. Big up to you, Malia. Malia, we love you down here, man. Uh, uh, Malia, lady. Sorry, she's a lady. Sorry. Sure. <laughs> Big up to you, Malia. Yeah. You were saying something? But, yeah, I know highly I rate them. I don't think they are the defined best two in the world. And I think in terms of depth, <laughs> like, okay, Kivior is a decent left center back. Um, but mm. I, it looks like he's playing his best as a left back in a four. So I think depth is still a problem for you in terms of center backs. Yeah, them two have been magnificent this season. There's no, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I think Leverkusen mm. also with Jonathan Ta, Kusunu, Hinkapi, um, and uh, what's the other one? Kusunu, Hinkapi. Tapsoba, Edmund Tapsoba. I think that's a very good four as well. So I think I wouldn't agree with you that it's definitely the best in Europe, but I don't think it's unreasonable to have that take. Just like I don't think it's unreasonable if someone said Leverkusen have the best center backs in Europe or Inter Milan. Them three stand above the rest, probably for me. Or Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain have some very good center backs, and they've been playing very well. As well. Uh, so, come, uh, uh, are, you, are, are you seriously calling teams like Learned, Troyes, and, and all this? Oh, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Lons are a Champions League team, Tony. You played them this season. <laughs> Did they not beat you bro, in France? Bro, we're talking about we're talking about the Premiership. See, but but what? Wait, see, yeah. So now, and this is the problem I have. So because Arsenal is leading the park in the in the Premiership right now, no one, no one is willing to give it to us. Yeah, that we have the best centre back pairing in Europe. If let's say it you was Liverpool right now, people. everyone will be saying Kanate. Everyone will be saying that Kanate. And, and Van Dijk are the best defenders in Europe. If they had the same statistic, if they had everything, the best, the best, the best in England this season, you will have no problem 
in saying that Van Dijk and, and Kanate are the best centre back parents in Europe. But just for the mere fact that it's Arsenal and we're top in the league right now, you know, you wouldn't want to give it to us. Yeah, it hurts to give it to the Arsenal, right? What did I just say like five minutes ago about Saliba and Gabriel? No, I'm just saying. Tony, I'm just saying. What did I say I'm five just... minutes ago about Saliba? I know and you. Gabriel? I know you. I know you. I know you rate them, but come on, man, you have to be giving those two defenders the best in, in, I said in Europe one right of now. The best. One of the yeah, what, bro? I, I'm not talking of one of the best. I don't Among. want one of the best. Uh, are the best. Name me, give me the best. I don't think they are the best, though. I don't okay, think they okay, are which is the best. best. Which is the best centre back pairing? Inter Milan. In Europe, in club football, yes. in Europe. This Inter season. Milan. Yes. Oh. oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh my day is. How many goals have they conceded this season? I, yeah, how many goals have they conceded? Check this it season? out. Check They've it conceded out. about fifteen. In the league, are you sure? 15? Yes, yes, they have barely conceded any goals. Tony, sorry, 14. 14. 14? Yes, in nine in 29. Games. Shout, out, shout, shout out to TKA, I think is a new subscriber. Big up to TKA, yep, he says, Talk it to the end. <laughs> Big up to you, man. And he also says, Here, he says, Um. Uh, facts don't need to hate, hate giving our credit. credit. Yeah, they hate silly. to give us credit. I think that's silly. It's true, TKA. They don't like to give us credit. They think that we're going to go to the Etihad and they're going to, you know, blow us off the park. But I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yeah. On Sunday, these guys will see. But see, what's your prediction? Hey, drink that that you uh, drink that Kool Aid, Tony. No, bro. But, oh. but see, tell me, tell me how this is Kool Aid. We both know that. Sit he isn't really looking. <laughs> oh my god! See, Steve, yeah, no problem. Exactly Laugh right, away, man. no problem, uh, no problem. Laugh away. But you know what? It's yeah, yummy. City isn't it's really looking good. good this season. I've said this thing to you. Defensively, exactly. they're not looking good. I don't respect. I, see, it's not like, of course, you have to respect City, yeah. But sincerely, yeah, they took four goals, yeah, against Chelsea Football Club this season, and I don't particularly respect Chelsea Football Club this season. They're that bad. Defensively, these guys, these guys aren't that yeah. good. They're not the city of last season. So yeah. I still see holes. I still see gaps. And 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 Pep Guardiola is also aggravating these gaps. Also, he's trying to choke Alvarez, uh, Bernardo Silva, uh, Phil Foden into a midfield advanced midfield trio. That's actually not yielding results, the desired result. Of course, definitely when you have a World Cup winner in, in, in your team, you want to, you know, kind of give him games. Because if Alvarez says, you know what, yeah, I'm walking out of this team tomorrow, there are suitors for him. He's a World Cup winner. He's won the World Cup. He's won the Champions League. He's won the league with Manchester City. So, of course, definitely. It's, it's hot property outside. So I do understand that he wants to kind of like, you know, compensate these players with lots of games and, and you know, help the team to, to, to have that harmony instead of just keeping him on the bench, of which he was on the bench last season and he scored 17 from the bench. But, it, it, but this season, I don't think he's scored up to 17 goals this season. I think he's left in 11 or something or 12 or something like that, which means his record last season is even looking more better than this season. But again, throw that away. Uh, Pep Guardiola is just choking this attacking talent into one midfield, yeah? Haaland doesn't really look like scoring goals against bigger teams and bigger positions this season. And he's coming against the defence that he really doesn't like. In Saliba and Gabriel, he doesn't like that pairing. He doesn't really score lots of goals against that parent. Saliba always know, knows the way to malhandle him. It's not looking good. Rodri just had uh, uh, two games in that Spanish national team in the internationals. He's going to be tired. He's going to be weary. Uh, Phil Foden hasn't really, uh, you know, lit up that English national midfield, right? He hasn't really done that. 
Yeah, he's a special player, but he hasn't really done that. Kevin De Bruyne is still not in an injury. Even if he comes back, he's still got, not going to be up to scratch, yeah, to the Kevin De Bruyne that we know and we do respect. So there's going to be problems. There's going to be holes. Arsenal is going to be coming there with our full force. We're going to be having Thomas Party on the bench. Julian Timber is up for selection down there. Kivio is looking good. I think good. that's a mistake. A good... I think the Timber selection is a mistake, by the way. I, don't, I think you should be very careful with him. Careful. Good and okay, but we have Kivio who's down there, so it's all it's exactly. all good. That's, I have the exactly. best right back in the I have the best right back in the league this season. If you know a better right back this season, maybe apart from Walker, who I'll give a pass. Yeah, in, yeah. in the league this season, just tell me. Yeah, Benjamin White is the best right back in the league this season. How huh? about mm. that? Apart from Walker, I beg to differ. Give me a bigger name. Than Benjamin White in that right back position. So good. We throw that away. We have a good back four and it's looking nice. And if uh, Declan Rice is up to scratch, if Jorginho is up for the fight, and even if Jorginho isn't up to, for the fight, we do have the Mons Partey who will be coming up from the bench. And if John Stones there, there, roams away like I know he would, then Kai Havertz will be ready to jump and pounce on Diaz who will be alone. And you know what? Yeah, I don't think uh, Diaz wants to be with that aerial threat, uh, 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 Kai Havertz, one-on-one. -on -one. And, of course, he doesn't want them dealing also with our wide players also because that's where most of Arsenal's attacks will be coming from. So, And Martinelli, as far as I've heard, is, is, is okay. He's okay now. So, you know, let's see. Let's see you what better happens. Win, Tony. See what happens. You better win, Tony. You better win because you're saying that Man City players are playing international games. You know, Arsenal players have played international games as well. So, you know, I I, yeah. I I think it'll be a very good game. I do have Man City winning it, but I do think you'll give them a scare. You will definitely be competitive in the game. But, but, but again, why why do you think they're so going to beat us? Why, why do you think they're going to beat us? I, I, I think this because is I think a, a better it's, it's, team. I think they're a better team. I think they have a better manager. I think that Rodri hasn't lost uh, the game. Why weren't why wasn't he the best manager when we won them when we won them in the in the community shield? Why wasn't because he the best time it's like manager? Eddie you said Tony. the same thing in the community shield. You said the same thing in, in the first game I at did. the NBA. You said all this stuff. And things. I got it wrong. And, and, and they proved you wrong. They proved you wrong. I did. I, they proved yeah. you wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they did. So, so why yeah. aren't you giving Arsenal the fighting chance of a 50 50 come at the Etihad? They played on neutral grounds and beat City this fans. season. That's where you don't want to misquote me, Tony. Listen to what I'm saying, not what you want to hear. What I'm saying is, I think Man City will win the game. Do I think you will, you will, you will, you will blow them out, or do I think they will blow you out? No, I think it'll be a very competitive. Close game of football. I look forward to it as a neutral because I think it's going to be an exciting back and forth game of football. Um, I'm very, very intrigued to see how you guys handle it. I just mm. think they're better. I just yeah. think they're better, and they have home. They, it's at their ground. If it was at the Emirates, I could see an argument as to why I, I probably would pick you guys. To no, but, but we've beaten them this season, even away from the Emirates Tony, ground. Tony. Tony, have you uh, also? Have you also Tony, it doesn't get Tony, better than Tony. that, and that's a, that's a neutral ground. It was a neutral ground. Tony, here's the biggest problem with Arsenal that nobody's talking about. Your away games this season, at oh, the big yeah, teams true. or in the Champions Leagues, you've lost at Villa Park, St James's Park, Longs, yes. the Champions League. You beat Sevilla and, and you drew a PSV, so fair enough, but. You did. You got a draw at Anfield. That's very impressive. And if you get a draw here, I don't think it takes you out of the title race, but I think it it's advantage Liverpool essentially. In that, in, actually, in I haven't been beaten by the big six this season. None of the big right, six have right, beaten right. me this season. Yeah, so Arsenal have a, a you know probably have a hundred percent record against the big six this season. I'm not hundred percent. Hundred percent in terms of like they, we haven't been beaten by them. Yeah, exactly. Lost, you know. So you know, no, but, I, I don't think well, the city. Well, well, say, Tony, when was the last time you won at the Etihad? That's not been a happy hunting ground. For you I, guys I, I know it's a long time. I know it's a long time ago, but so 
seven see, years. I, there was a time. Twenty fifteen. There was a there was a, there was a time that I haven't even beaten City at home for the past seven years, six yeah. seven years, and they came and we broke that. So there's always a time to break it, and if there's any time for us to break that hoodoo, it's this time because yes, they're looking. Yes, yes, I agree with you. This is your best opportunity. Yes, this is the best time. They're looking. I shaky. agree. With you. So we need to take the chance and, and 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 give them a big fight. And again, yeah, see, we just have to go for it right now. It's go or bust. We have to go. But yeah. just like I've summarized everything for you, I've told you, it's simple. We need to make sure that our wide areas, you know, are flowing with that ball. I need Bukayo Saka to be on that ball, threatening, get on their faces because City don't like. In fact, City don't like teams that get on their faces. Get on their yep. faces. Try to slap them up, provoke them, the and that's why. The that's why Kai have it. Middle of the park. Exactly. Exa yeah. Exactly. Force a reaction. And and, and and that's why I like Kai Havertz, yeah, because he's that player that likes to wind people up. He's a, he's a wind-up merchant. You know, he's going to wind people up. He's going to wind Diaz up. Uh, you know, that he's going to make him want to commit some certain kind of fouls. Uh, you know, and of course, like I've told you, John Stones is going to roam away. Yeah. And I want him to roam away. So, John Stones, please roam away. Leave Diaz alone. Yeah. In the you know in that in the heart of that defense and let's see one on one Tony. with Diaz. Think, what are you think, gonna I do? Think, I think Stones and Walker are gonna be injured for that game. Because oh, you're buying, oh, you're, you're, buying into, you're buying into you're buying into this lies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, no. Tony, I am buying on, into on, the on, lies. on, on Saturday. Way, you're yes. gonna be shot. It's Pep Guardiola. See, this is a mentality. I, I, I agree. There might be some mind games. I by don't think there are. Though. By Sunday, all of them will be ready for the matchup. Don't Man get City it fans twisted. are it's not happy lies. right now. That's all I'm going to say. Man City fans are not happy right now. By the way, mm. Tony, do you remember the last time they beat them? You beat them 2 nothing. Who scored in the game? It was 2015. Do you remember who scored? Oh, my 2015 days. at the Etihad. Some trivia. Oh my days. Are you sure it's not Till Walker? No. No. No, Walker didn't score in that. I forgot it, man. Zuru and Santi Cazorla scored a penalty. And Santi Cazorla, yeah, exactly, yeah. man. I've totally forgotten about that. You had a, but again, you, this is your that shows you how long. Yeah. This is your starting yeah, 11. David Ospina, Bayerin, Mertesacker, Koscielny, Nacho Monreal, Mertesacker. Francis Coquelin, mm -hmm. Aaron Ramsey. Ramsey. I think Ramsey was there. Ramsey, yep. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Cazorla, Sanchez, Giroud. That was your team the last time mm -hmm. they won. So, it's been a while. And actually, you know what's funny? It's been a while, man. Kansas City's lineup is funny. Joe Hart, Zabaleta, company, Martin <laughs> Dimichelis, Gail Clichy. Dimichelis. Yeah. Fernandinho, yeah. Fernando Reyes, Jesus Navas, David Silva, James Milner played on the left, and Sergio Aguero. Oh, but, but James Milner was still, you know, he was still a horse, uh, yeah. uh, you know, at that time. You know, he still had the park, he still make deep runs, you know, pacey kind of player at that time. The Machelis was still a great, great, great defender at that time. Uh, Navaz also, you know, on the wings was fire at the time. Maybe yeah. did not achieve uh, to his potential down there, but, you know, he was career. really that good. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. been a while. But anyway. You've won there, you've won there two times. You've won there two times in, 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 mm. in all competitions since 2010. So... Oh, my days, man. God help us, man. <laughs> it's going to be hard. I recognize that fact. But if there's any time we need to beat them, this is the time because we have the momentum. Yeah. Our players are okay. You know, we don't have any new injuries. Every other player are back, you know, and it's looking good. We still have that joker in our bench right now called Thomas Partey. If he turns up, something might happen. 
Kai Havertz is looking good, fresh from the international, scored a goal, he's looking good, uh, confidence yeah. is down there, you know, ready to, uh, you know, cause havoc in the 18-year box uh, of Manchester City. He's ready, he's ready. Uh, Declan Rice might be a little bit tired mostly because he has been played and, and, and overused by that idiot uh, uh, Southgate, but still on still, let's see what happens, man. Yeah, it's true, just knows how to yeah. overuse... Arsenal players, but Kai Walker gets off and, and, and pretend as if he's injured and just walks he's off. He's not pretending that he's injured. Like, I, that I don't makes understand. Sleep, if that, if that makes you sleep at night, don't It's mind either. games. He's going to come back. Oh, my day. Uh, Steve. If that helps you why, sleep why at don't... night, Tony, fair play. fair play. No, but Steve, why, why, see, why don't you understand that this is, this is just from the script of Pep Guardiola? Simple. It's 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 clear to see. It's clear. I don't know how it's clear to see. It's clear. Bernardo Bernardo Silva was. Uh, they said that he's not going to play in the second game for Portugal. He didn't play. I don't think Diaz played in that second game for Portugal. Come on, what are we talking about? All the players are being rested, and even if they're not rested, they feign injury. What are we talking about here, man? Let's don't act like this, man. For once, for once, just support Arsenal, man. <laughs> support us, bruv. We need your support. So, I'm not supporting see either ya, one of you. See, man, what is your prediction for that matchup before we go? Mm. <laughs> 3-2 Man City. Hmm. Three, two, man, okay. city. You'll score first. Oh, we'll score first. You even give us a goal. Okay. I think we'll win that game by two goals to one. It's going to be a hard, hard, hard fought one, but Arsenal will, you know, we'll deal with them. People won't believe it. People will be shocked at what will happen on the day. It will be like magic, you know. But again, I see the thing that if we want to win this trophy, we have to go down there and win. We have to. We have to go and win. Uh-huh. Steve Mahala, uh, thanks. You know what it is? You know what it is, Tony? Mm. I hope you do win. Mm. I hope you do win. Because it is funny seeing people get triggered by Arsenal. I will agree definitely on that. It is very funny. Like, flawless would be miserable. All these guys would be, oh, you know, yeah. Chelsea fans. I can't wait to I, see I, flawless face, man. Yeah. So, Shout out to TKA. TKA, big up to you. Those of you who are watching, man, uh, uh, go subscribe to TKA too, man. You know, I think I was on a show with him and um, and, and sad, man. You know, uh, big up to you, TKA, man. And thanks for showing up for me, man. Big up to you. God bless you. He says, I don't think we will concede to, I can see a low scoring game. Yeah, 2 1. Me. Personally, I think it's going to be 2 1, TKA, man. I think we're going to win 2 1. It's going to be hard for, but we're going to win. I think to be too hard for them to cope with with the deep runs from the wide areas. I do think that um, Kevin De Bruyne isn't at his best right now and he's injured right now as we speak. But again, this could also be mind games. Uh, we should also be ready for that reality that this might be mind games. But even if he comes back, he's not going to be 100%. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne in the games he's played this season have given up the ball away in the middle of the park since, uh, bro, it's been hard for Kevin De Bruyne to, to stamp his authority on games this season, yeah. Yeah, he might have those one, two brilliant moves here and there, but he's also given the ball away in the middle of the but Tony, that's that all a player of his season. quality needs. Tony, that's the crazy thing about Kevin De Bruyne. Hmm. If you hmm. mess up, if you make a mistake, yeah, he has that one or two moments. He capitalizes in that. Or even one or two touches of the football. You of of the ball. That could be exactly. That's how good he is. He is a factor no matter the circumstances. Even if he's not as fully fit, because he can come up with the moment. We've seen it yeah. time and time and time and time again. So. Yeah. Yeah. Big ups to uh Warrior. Warrior, you come in um when um you know the show is almost done. But Warrior, I will be seeing you tomorrow. Uh, uh, uh you know, because you know you're the you're the tough guy. You know, of flawless TV. 
But big ups to you, man. It's all love down here, man. We're all family. And warrior, it would be nice to also be having you on my channel too, man. Come on, man. We're family, man. You know, big ups to you. And always love all the time. Uh, uh, Warrior J93. And uh, see, Warrior, yeah, I, I do think Arsenal is going to go to the Etihad and go get a win. How about that? I know you don't want to hear that, yeah? I know I know it's not the right thing to think about, yeah, if you're Warrior J93. But you know what, yeah? Arsenal will go there, yeah? With probably, for me, probably the best defensive setup in Europe, yeah? That's what we're showing up with at the Etihad, yeah? Haaland will be, you know, I think he'll be scared of Saliba once again. Yeah. Uh, I'm still waiting for John Stones to roam around. Roam away. Just leave, leave the ads, you know, all on his own. Yeah. Jones, roam away. And I, I do expect uh, uh, Declan Rice to have a very, very amazing game on the day. This is what Arsenal will be coming with. We'll be showing up with these things. And we still have that joker also called Thomas Partey. And you know what, yeah? And see, Steve Mahala, we've totally mm. thrown into the toilet, which is what we always do when we're talking about Arsenal. We throw these things into the toilet. Arsenal is the best side that have scored true set pieces this season. How about that? So we, we still do have this arsenals, yeah, this ammunition, yeah, in our, you know, in our backyard. And, and we could call on these tools anytime we like. We could wield the stick, you know, anytime we like. So, you know, this is these are the things, these are the advantages we'll be showing up with to the Emirates. And I can't just wait to expect Guardiola, you know, this is what we're coming with. What are you coming up with? What are you coming up with? Uh, that's what I just want Pep Guardiola to answer us. We've done it. We've done him dirty twice this season. We've beat him on new to ground this season in the first trophy opener of the season in the Community Shield. I know it's not a goddamn trophy, but it was a beating. Yeah, it was the beating per se that I really uh, uh, liked. So we've beaten him once uh, uh, on on new to grounds. It's come down to the Emirate. We've beaten him at the Emirate this season. And, and, you know, we'll be showing up to the Emirate full of confidence. We have to go there and win. This is even the most important part. Arsenal have to go there and win. Because we know if we don't go there to win, we know these guys are going to, you know, <laughs> it's tap, tap, boom. All these other teams are going to melt in front of them. If they win it, it it's, it's the trophy straight up. So Arsenal need to go and win at the 80 hard if we're ever going to dream of of you know, winning this trophy this season. See, Steve Mahalo, talk to these people. Shout out your channel, man. Great, great show, me and you have had today. That's why I like doing shows with you, my brother, man. I like old times, man. You know, good, scrappy game. You know, we always have it. We have the scraps. We have the delusional. We have the points. We have everything, man. Big ups to you, Steve Mahalo. Thanks, man. Yeah, hey, no. Thank you for having me, bro. Yeah, good show. A lot of good topics we covered. Um, yeah, and like I said, I'm just yeah. looking forward to the game. Um, I don't know if I'm looking forward to the Newcastle West Ham game because I don't think that's gonna go well very very well for me. Um, <laughs> oh my days, guys, it's look. gonna be deadly, man. Newcastle is dead. You guys are the mud, man. You guys are the mud. Not that you're in the mud, you are the mud. It, it's horrible, yeah. man. Stinkers after stinkers. For new for new castle, right? it's not looking good. Yeah, no, we um, it's not been a good, it's not been a very good season. Some great moments, you know, beating Paris Saint Germain mm. four to one. That was mm. a highlight. We you know we beaten. That was a uh, highlight of the season. We beat Man United a few, you know, a few times. So, and also well, Aston I Villa. I think you beat Aston Villa this season too, man. Oh, man, Twice, and it looked good. It looked good. It looked good. But but here's the thing, Tony. It's been consistency. It's been consistency, yeah, bro. That's a problem. Consistency of the team. And West Ham are a little bit inconsistent as well. The problem is, mm. though, they have players like Paqueta. They have players like Mohamed Kudus. They have mm, players Kudus. like Edson Alvarez, who's been very good. Yeah. For, for, they for can literally football. hurt you, man. They can literally yeah. hurt you. Yeah, they're, mm. they're tough, tough guys. So, look, that game is not going to be easy. Sven Botman is out until October because he had a knee surgery. Ooh. I'm extremely pissed off about that because how are the medical team botching this this badly? Why is a player playing for months on a bad knee? Mm. Because clearly this mm. didn't just happen overnight, Tony. Like, like Yeah, so. exactly. So Sven exactly. Botman is, is out. Um, a bunch of guys are out. 
uh, for mm-hmm. us, but we still have yeah. a team that could beat West Ham, but I just don't feel good about the game. Our home you know what? Yeah, go on. You know what, yeah? You know what, yeah? I'm going to lay an ambush in the coming weeks, yeah, for mm-hmm. Flawless. Look at this. Just look at what's going to happen. They, they go against Brentford, yeah, on Saturday. That's a yeah. tough, tough game at the VTEC Stadium. Yeah. Wait, is After that a that game, they, uh, Yeah, away at the VTEC Stadium. Oh, and then is, they have to is. play okay, Chelsea. Okay. See, Warrior J93. I know you're a Chelsea fan. Yeah. Manchester United is coming to town. What do you have to say? Will you man up to Flawless, your guy, your brother? Will you man up to him and tell him you're going to beat him right to his face? Are you going to do it? Well, none is the time. I want to see your gangster. How about that? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that's a different yeah. one, yeah? So they'll be going and playing against Chelsea. This is the big one, yeah? After that Chelsea game, back-to-back games, yeah? They're playing against Liverpool. <laughs> and then the last one <laughs> for the most, they're going to play against Bournemouth with Solanke and the rest of them, yeah? Well... At one more stadium. Oh, my days. See, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to laugh at uh, um, uh, 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 Flawless in the coming weeks. Because right now, there's nothing that ambition that, you know, we might be getting closer to hey, that Tony, Champions League, you know. Tony, you know, Tony, you know what it is? <laughs> it, you know what it it is might just be having that hope. That hope. Oh, my you days. You know what it is, Tony? I, Tony, I'm telling you right wait. now. I'm telling you right now. Those Man United fans are awfully confident against coming to City in the FA Cup final. I think they've get there's another thing coming when they play Coventry City in that in that FA Cup game. I'm telling are you, you sure? right now. Yeah. Are you sure? Like Coventry Coventry are more than capable of putting in an upset. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. They're a good side, bro. And this is after losing Victor Yokorez and Gustavo mm. Armour. To Sheffield United. Mark Robbins is a good manager, bro. They just mm. beat Wolves in an emphatic style. Like, mm. they're a good team, man. They could get promoted to the Premier League as well. They're just outside of the promotion playoff spot in the championship. So they could definitely spring a surprise, Tony. They could spring a surprise on Man United. So if Man United, if Man United lose one game this year, I hope it's that one. And obviously when we play them, but we we ain't beating them at Old Trafford because we haven't done that in close to a decade. So. No problems, man. You know, um, Flawless and his crew all laughing, relaxing, enjoying the breeze right now. No problems, man. Laugh away. No problem. <laughs> in the coming weeks, I would have my laugh back, Flawless. I will have my laugh back. Mostly after I go beat uh, City at the 80 had Flawless. I will mm. have my laugh back. Don't worry. Enjoy. Enjoy, Flawless. Enjoy. See, Steve, talk to these people, man. Talk to them, man. Talk to them. Tell them where you, you know, where your channel is at and what you got coming up, man. Um, what I got. And Steve, up? I miss doing watch Steve, I miss doing watch alongs with you, man. I can't wait for a weekend no, where we can do watch alongs again. If you want to join me, Tony, if you want to join me for I'm doing let me look at my schedule. Not so not, week, not not the week, not weekday, but maybe weekend, Friday yeah. something. It's okay. Yeah, Friday, weekend. Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So on so on Friday, I'm doing Longs versus Leo at uh, okay. nine p.m. or eight p.m. UK time. Um, Saturday okay. morning, my time. I'm doing West Ham Newcastle at twelve thirty UK. Then I'm doing uh, what's the other one? Okay, I would like to do that uh, Newcastle. Sure, sure. I can sure, do that. Sure. If it's not clashing with our game, then I'll do it. No, it's not. It's not because the the twelve thirty games are standalone. It's a oh, standalone. then I'll uh, then I'll do it with you. Just send me the link, man. I miss doing what you long to you. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. So but yeah, that's what I got going on coming up on the channel. Um, okay. I've got Lons Lons versus Lille uh, in the Derby du Nord. I have. Yep, West Ham, Newcastle. I'm doing Leverkusen, Hoffenheim, Bayern München versus Borussia Dortmund. And then I, I have to figure out what I'm doing on Sunday. But Monday morning, I'll do Sosuolo versus Udinese and Villarreal versus Atletico Madrid. Um, and then some other midweek games. So 
Yeah, that's what I got going on. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for having me on, bro. Good chatting it up with you, as always. As always, bro. Yeah, as always, man. As always, man. Um, see you guys, yeah. Catch me tomorrow with um the football uh the football uh talk football podcast talk yeah nice uh factory uh me and the boys will be down here uh back of the net podcast will be down here um richard will be down here our fellow newcastle fan who is also part of that crew right now what's his name mm. What's your friend's name, bro? The Newcastle Andy. fan. Andy, Andy. Andy oh, will be down really? here because part of... Yeah, you know, me and him will have a show together, you know, uh, yeah. uh, the Premiership uh, uh, Talk Factory. So he'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow, you know. And um, Fan Nation TV will be down here tomorrow. So, you know, nice. come come, come, chill with the boys tomorrow, guys. Yeah, come chill with us. Yeah, and, and, and let's take you to, uh, you know, a panoramic view of what's coming up in the premiership this weekend high 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 stakes high rewards coming up um in the night yeah 12 12 12 a.m yeah 12 a.m uk time i will be um on um flawless channel yeah for the yeah. for the rival for the rival um show uh, which is um Manchester United versus Arsenal. So yeah. you know, check out Flawless Channel, you know, and um, come check us out. I'll be with Flawless, uh, as you know, I'm a member of Sakazim TV. So you know, uh, come chop it up with us. You just recently clocked 10k subscribers. So you know, uh, 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 come check us out there tomorrow. Me and TJ Warren will be down there. You know, so TJ, you know, is the most popular Arsenal fan right now. So you know, uh, uh, come show him some love. Uh, uh, down there to me and him and flawless and um on friday me and band will be back uh, uh to the fray uh you know me and these other guys will be uh, coming up craig matthew she'd also be coming back this weekend with me a lots of shows yeah the G, the G sports doesn't want to come this week he's waiting for us to lose against man city <laughs> before he comes to gloat so he doesn't want he doesn't want no smoke this week so <laughs> it's coming yeah. next week so yeah. you know, so big ups, yeah, and um, join me and Steve, uh, uh, probably maybe next week if something up is there, and join him on his channel for some couple of watch alongs. I will be on his channel this weekend because I miss doing watch alongs with him. I want to do that right. Newcastle one with him. So catch you guys and big ups, big ups everyone. Peace.